In Scottsdale, Arizona, Senator Barry Goldwater, amateur radio operator K7UGA, still owns the biggest antenna in town. But he has his eye on the future, a dream that'll make that huge array obsolete. Well, that big rascal of mine out there, 83 feet high, I remember when I put it up and the building inspector said you didn't get a building permit. Take it down, it's just sitting in 39 tons of concrete. <laughs> but that's, I don't need that anymore. Barry Goldwater says the future of modern communication is tied to space. In the world of amateur radio, that means satellites. There's a new one in the works, and he's excited about that. Now, Senator, let's share a look at the big bird. This is phase 3D. This is what it's all about. A huge satellite, three times larger than any amateur radio satellite that's ever flown, almost 900 pounds and over six feet across. With its solar panels unfurled, its wingspan stretches over 20 feet. Its all-new state-of-the-art equipment will take ham radio into the 21st century. The 21st century is day after tomorrow. And we'll have this thing up and navigating by that time. I keep saying I hope we'll live another 50 years because I am convinced that the world is going to make more progress in the next 50 years than we've made in the whole 7,000 years of history. And that's going to be one of the babies. So this opens up another area where we can get in. The average ham can play with it. Some of them will make important discoveries, others won't, but it'll be a hell of a challenge. You've been a ham radio operator for a long time, and now you see the door opening on a whole new vista of ham radio. And I wonder how you feel about that. Thanks to no code and this new means of transmission and reception, uh, we're going to see uh, our 10-year-old, I was 13 when I started this business, we'll see some more of them starting and they'll get out their soldering irons and their screwdrivers and their little kit boards and they're the ones that are going to make the improvements. Unfortunately, the average amateur is not what you'd call a fat cat and we have to depend on outsiders to keep this thing going. And so, uh, we're after money. We're not kidding anybody. I didn't get in this just to get in the satellite business. I got into it to raise some money to help out. And there'll be people like me all over this country that just want to help out. It's another step forward in science. It's another chance to help a young man decide what he's going to do with his life. We've come a long way since 1957 when Russia set up the first man-made satellite, Sputnik. The first satellite carrying amateur radio went into orbit in 1961. A succession of increasingly sophisticated payloads has brought us voice, packet, television. More than 30 amateur radio satellites have orbited the Earth. Many are there now beaming communication of all types. AMSAT, the Radio Amateur Satellite Corporation, was formed in 1969 to provide spacecraft and services for the amateur fraternity. As they grew more competent in the space arena, the dreams of the planners locked in on a major objective. Let's build a satellite that'll give amateurs all over the world a whole new frontier. And let's make the first satellite truly for all amateurs. As the fourth satellite in the Phase 3 series, it quite naturally will be known as Phase 3D. But there, the similarity with the current crop of amateur satellites ends. First, its orbit will be easier for us mortals to comprehend. Circling the Earth every 16 hours, Phase 3D will reappear over North America every other day and then remain almost motionless for many hours at a time. Foreign partners in Europe, South America, Japan will share the load of building and financing since they too will be, quotes, on orbit, sharing in the venture. The amateurs and their laboratories are already in design and development, building high power transmitters to run from 80 watts to 250, far more powerful than any that have flown before. They'll handle just about all modes, single sideband, packet, real-time television, data, even CW. The high gain antennas you see here will produce powers up to the equivalent of 
25,000 watts, providing a healthy signal for even small stations here on Earth. Under computer control, users will have a wide choice of frequencies. Any receiver can be connected with any transmitter, and the frequencies are mostly in the super high frequencies where antennas can be tiny. With four uplink receivers and five downlink transmitters, this should open up a whole new world of communication, the world of microwaves. Yes, phase 3D will greatly improve satellite operation for current amateur satellite operators. But more important, it's bound to open up space communication to the vast majority of licensed radio amateurs throughout the world, people who have thought that satellites were beyond their capability. And that's why it's called the Satellite for All Radio Amateurs. But benefiting amateurs is not Phase 3D's only mission. It'll support interactive programs for school children in this country and abroad, and thus help inspire youngsters to pursue technical studies with the aim of producing a new generation of engineers, scientists, and other highly trained people. Its telemetry system will provide data about the environment of space for study by students and others. The camera system, being built for it by the Japanese AMSAT group, will provide a close-up view of Earth and the heavens. It'll be sort of like having our own space telescope. But these benefits will not come cheaply. The total price tag for Phase 3D is estimated at four and a half million dollars. Our share here in North America is one-third of that, or one and a half million dollars. A substantial percentage of that cost will go toward the launch, even though the European Space Agency, the builders of the huge new Ariane 5 launch vehicle on which Phase 3D is to ride into orbit in the spring of 1996, even though they are giving the amateur community a super deal, the launch nevertheless is expected to cost well over a million dollars. Can amateur radio raise such a sum? Well, it can, with your help. To learn more about Phase 3D and the amateur space program, write AMSAT, that's A-M-S-A-T, AMSAT, Post Office Box 27, Washington, D.C., 20044. And that's Phase 3D, quite possibly the next big step in amateur radio, a step that needs your support to make it happen. Roy Neal, K6DUE.